Hello, I'm Emily Bodie, and thank you for joining me to find out more about Victoria University's opportunities in engineering and the built environment. I'm joined today by Associate Professor Zora Vassalj, Head of Built Environment. We have Dr. Rudy Van Staden, the course chair for Architectural and Civil Engineering. And we also have Dr. Yani Boris, who is an academic in our built environment courses. Welcome everybody, thank you for joining me. Now, Zora, we might start with you. When we talk about the built environment, what kind of courses does that actually cover? Right, so we cover a whole spectrum of undergraduate and postgraduate courses. For example, in undergraduate, we have construction management, which is a four year honors program. And then we also have two, three year courses, bachelor of building surveying, and Bachelor of Building Design. So in addition to that, there are also masters, postgraduate program, masters in project management, graduate diploma and graduate certificate in project management, and also graduate certificate in performance-based fire codes and standards. So quite a lot. Quite a lot, yeah, a large <laughs> portfolio. <laughs> and Yanni, what kind of things can students expect to learn in some of these bachelor programs that are on offer in our built environment area? Yeah, great question. I um, can't answer that in 20 minutes. You're going to learn a whole lot across the three courses. Um, I'll start with construction management. Uh, it's the degree that I teach mainly in. So students will uh, learn about principles of project management, estimating, cost controlling, quantity surveying, um, building regulations and law. Um, what else is there? There's contract management. There's a whole range of things. Uh, building design is more geared towards architectural design of buildings. So it's more design focused. And then surveying is really that um, compliance assessment and students will really delve deep into building codes, regulation and law. Ooh. And of course, inspection procedures. Of course. Yes. <laughs> so certainly the built environment is something that we notice every day when we're out and about walking around. What is it about Victoria University's courses in built environment that stand out? Um, another good question. Um, well, I'll start with building surveying on that one. We're one of only two institutions in Victoria that allow students to become, or allow building surveyors, I should say, to become, uh, to get their unlimited registration for building surveying. So that allows them to survey or work on or comply, issue compliance certificates, sorry, on buildings of unlimited size. Okay, so that, that's really a point of distinction for us in that building surveying space. Um, now, moving over to construction management, we have a strong focus on sustainable design and also advanced uh, techniques, including uh, building information modeling or BIM. Uh, perhaps Zora can jump in there for the building design course. Uh, building design, obviously all those creative solutions that students embark on and we also try really hard to um, reinforce the sustainability concepts. So one of the, as you can see, our discipline, built environment, sits in the College of Engineering and Science and that gives our students that embedment into engineering principles, which is really desired by employers, for example, students understanding how the structures standing, to, uh, standing up, how they came to be practical skills, constructability, um, obviously uh, good, uh, good grasp of physics concepts. Mm. So that's something that we pride ourselves and obviously we have, uh, as you can see, all of us in here are engineering backgrounds. So yeah. A lot of our academic staff are actually um, uh, having engineering as their formal education. Mm. So, so a strong grounding in mathematics, physics, those kind of areas as well? That's right, that's mm. right. Uh, very favourable by potential uh, employers. <laughs> Now, we do get a lot of questions about what the difference between uh, doing the Bachelor of Building Design might be as opposed to a Bachelor of Architecture or something right. in that realm. Can you give us a bit of a distinction? That's right. So, architecture program is much longer, five years minimum. And architecture is very broad, so it might include interior design, urban design, planning and development, um, etc. But in our case, it's a focus architectural design of buildings. So it's a very specialised specialized one. We also provide quite a number of pathways for our uh, TAFE students. So we, for all three programs, construction management, building surveying and building design, uh, we also have structured pathways which allow them to achieve credit of either a year or year and a half of their study. So depending which course they select. Great. Now, Rudy, you work across our architectural and civil engineering courses, but we do have a range of disciplines when it comes to engineering. Can you tell us a bit about what's on offer? <coughs> Please. Uh, thank you very much, Emily. Before I tell you, I want to tell you some exciting news 
Um, the recent graduate outcome surveys ranked engineering first in Victoria for our teaching practice, so the way that we teach students, and also the skills developed by our, by, by our students. So just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> That's exciting <laughs> news, yeah. Um, in terms of undergraduate, we've got four areas of specialisation, architectural, civil, mechanical and electrical engineering. And in uh, postgraduate, we've got the Master of Engineering, specialising in telecommunication and power engineering. So something that not a lot of students might know is that our engineering courses all share a common first year. What might some of the advantages of that be? Often when um, students start in their first year um, of engineering, they might commence engineering because they liked Lego or some reason like <laughs> that. and not really sure which area they want to choose. And the, the good thing about first year, and I think this distinguishes us from other institutes, is that the first year gives students the taste of all of the different sub all of the different disciplines in engineering. So students can then discover their passion and pursue it in later, later years. Great, so a bit of flexibility there for students who might not be 100% sure on what they want to do. Now, something that's so important, and I'm sure you'll all agree, and apologies if you don't, uh, things like facilities and the workplaces and work structures that universities or TAFEs have in place is really important when it comes to something as practical and hands-on as engineering and built environment. Yanni, can you give us a bit of an understanding about what kind of facilities are available to our built, in, um, built environment students? Yeah, uh, we've recently uh, built a new design studio, so it's quite an exciting space over in um, Building D. So that's a, that's a space designed, or it's open to everyone in the college, but it's really there for design students. So we've got you know, big screen monitors everywhere, um, big workbenches, and that's designed for students to get their hands dirty and really spend a lot of time uh, designing or working on their arch architectural design projects. So that's an exciting new space. Um, we've also got um, the old engineering labs where we do a lot of our work. Um, Rudy spends a lot of time in there mixing concrete and breaking things. But um, so in, in in those spaces, he's got an example now of some concrete. Do you carry the yeah. concrete around with you yeah, usually, no. Rudy? All the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he loves that. Um, so in those labs, we can do a lot. We can do concrete mixing, obviously. So that's where students can uh, get their hands dirty and mix concrete, learn about mixed design, and also how we test concrete strength uh, in addition to a few other structural parameters. Uh, but I won't, won't bore everyone with the details <laughs> now. Uh, we've also got a hydraulics lab. Um, Rudy, is there anything that I'm missing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, we've got a Victorian, the, one of the largest Victorian substations for our electrical engineering students. Um, and it's valued at $3 million. Ooh. And it's in conjunction with a few industry partners. And we've got, forgive me, we've got, um, we've got a, 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 a second largest wave tank simulator. We've also got a wind tunnel, um, a large, a uh, downscaled and a, and a larger wind tunnel. Uh, and uh, I think, Yanni, I think you covered most of it. And we've also got a, um, like Andrew will mention later on, we've got a student formula vehicle, which the mechanical engineering students um, get to work on through their cool. studies. But the, the thing um, I think that's important about these labs is, um, they focus around problem-based learning, so students are not stuck in a lecture, lecture room uh, listening to somebody um, just telling them the concepts. They actually go down, go down to the labs and they get their hands dirty. Mm. They can really understand the concepts so much better in that way. So. Mm. I think we've talked a lot throughout these panels as to what students can do to get their hands dirty, but I think actually getting in and mixing concrete is probably the best example that you can get and get of students literally getting their hands dirty. So it's interesting that you bring up the substation, Rudy, because we're actually about to cut there in a moment. But before we do, I want to thank you so much, Yanni, for coming to spend some time with us. Thanks for having me. Anytime. We'll be hearing from Andrea, who's one of our mechanical engineering students, up just after this. But before we do, I'd like to cross to Bobby McCumber, who is on site at the substation at Victoria University's Footscray Park campus. Bobby, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for asking, Emily. Uh, I'm joined now by Pejman Payday, who is a PhD student with the College of Engineering and Science, also known as PJ. Now, PJ, tell us exactly where we are right now. Uh, basically, we are in Victoria University Zone substation uh, uh, simulator. So it is one of the first uh, uh, laboratories that was used uh, and developed by Victoria University to cooperation with the uh, other industry partners for uh, power system engineering department in Victoria University. Now, 
this equipment here, is this something that our students will use in their careers? Or, and if it is, uh, what are those careers? Uh, yes, actually, this is the $3 million uh, uh, basically facilities that are available for students to have a real world experience on, of the modern uh, power system equipment, especially intelligent electronic devices, which we call it IEDs. And this is uh, basically is uh, uh, one of the main um, uh, components and elements that used in power system uh, utilities. So there are a lot of engineering uh, requirements like power systems and uh, IT guys and all of these experts are working uh, in the, this uh, field in the power system engineering. What are some of the benefits for our students using state-of-the-art facilities? Uh, basically, this is the opportunity that they have uh, to have hands-on experience to work with uh, real-world uh, uh, devices. And this will give them the edge with comparing to other students who have not that experience to have uh, exposed with these uh, um, real equipment and also state-of-the-art uh, uh, IT equipment. So this is the opportunity that they may get much opportunities for job uh, interviews and job uh, um, positions. Yeah, a three million dollar facility. It's it's quite amazing to be a part of that here at Victoria University. Such a big facility. Tell me about some of the industry partners that help build this facility. Yeah, we have uh, different uh, industry partners from Gemina, uh, Osnet, and we have the uh, Wendo Electric power system, uh, windows like uh, ABB, GE, and um, also uh, uh, like Siemens, so all of these things. Well, thank you very much for your time. We've learned a lot. I hope you've learned a lot at home tuning in as well. Um, I'll go through to you, Emily, as well, and just ask about some of our industry partners and what their involvement is with the College of Engineering and Science. Maybe that's a great question. Zora, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how industry is embedded into our built environment and engineering courses. Right, that's a great question. Uh, we really make an effort to involve and engage with our industry partners from the very early on through site visits, guest lectures, internship, involving industry partners with providing assignment briefs that students can work uh, while studying particular subjects. So they're in parallel working for re with, uh, on real life projects. For example, some of recent examples is the uh, West, Westgate Tunnel, something that everyone is familiar with. Uh, and then later on in more senior years on their research projects where projects can be co-supervised with industry partners. So a lot, a lot of opportunities. We also have course advisory committees which involve um, industry people so they are engaged from the very early on in shaping and reviewing our courses but also having one-on-one -on -one experience for our students. And what do you think the benefit of having industry so heavily involved in these courses might be? It makes the courses relevant so we really make sure that uh, what we design and what we deliver uh, speaks to industry needs, is relevant, is uh, up to date. So obviously when uh, Yanni and Rudy talked about all those great facilities that we have, we also have quite a number of computer labs with the state of the art software packages that uh, our students are sort of using from the very early on, just the way they would uh, in uh, the real world. And another feature is obviously the fact that, for example, having this first year as common, but also a number of units in later years are also common to the three programs. So students from very early on sit in that multidisciplinary mm. environment and so they're learning from very early on um, to speak to professionals from different disciplines to understand how they think, how they approach problems, which is then obviously a replica of what's happening in the real world. Yeah, some great opportunities mm, for our great. students there. So we've spoken a lot about now what entails or what's included in the courses. Really keen to get a bit of a student perspective. So I'd like to welcome Andrea Hemschild to the panel. So you're a student currently studying mechanical engineering. Tell us a little bit about why you chose to study engineering and why you chose VU. 
Yeah, no worries. So um, I decided to study mechanical engineering because I've always loved to invent things. I've loved to create. I was a very artistic student in school. Um, and um, the thing that made me choose VU was just about how um, much of a community the university is. Uh, your lecturers are always happy to help. Um, and it's small classrooms, so you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Um, there's been so many occasions where I've had a question about um, like the course um, or a problem that I needed to solve um, and I've been able to just walk into my lecturer's office and ask them straight away and they're, they're so happy to help. Um, and so yeah, VU has a great environment, a great community and that's really why I chose to study at VU. Yeah, the open door policy, I think, or the availability of our lecturers and our tutors and professors to students, I think is one of the really key things that continues to come out when we speak to students. So, Rudy, you mentioned briefly earlier about our problem-based learning. Can you elaborate a little bit on what that is? And then we might get, Andrea, your examples of what that looks like in the classroom. That's a, that's a really good um, question. Um, problem-based learning, we try to uh, imitate what students will experience in industry. And like Professor Versailles was saying, we've got a lot of industry input and industry often has input into these, uh, into problem-based learning. And how they do that is through the assessments. So the assessments will be very similar to what uh, um, a, a graduate engineer might experience. So we try to link the concepts and things that we teach um, into um, real life problems that the students have to solve and having to solve a problem makes it so much more interesting. Mm. Um, and sort of following on what Professor Vassalter was saying before, um, one of the exciting projects that students are working on at the moment is um, at the, tackling some of the design challenges that Transurban faced with the West Coast Tunnel project. So. Fantastic. Andrea, tell us a bit about some of these problem-based learning environments that you've been in or what you might have learned during them. Yeah, no worries. So um, basically, generally, a, a day at uni, we'll start off with classes in the classroom where we talk about um, the theories behind what we're learning. Um, and then once we've gone through the lecture-based learning, we work, go into a workshop where we work through some theory base uh, and do some calculations for some simple um, uh, assumptions. Um, and then once we do that, we'll actually go out and do um, often do lab work based work. Um, and that's really exciting. So for instance, um, in fluid mechanics two, we did a lot of uh, lab based work in our fluid labs um, that Rudy was talking about earlier on. Uh, so we worked with the, uh, the wave simulator. Um, there's also some uh, the pipe um, model pipe uh, models that we have worked with um, and we really just use like calculations um, to make assumptions about those and uh, predict the flow through those pipes. Mm. <laughs> so you mentioned that you're always keen on building things, you always knew that engineering was a path you wanted to go down and I think that's quite clear in the way that you speak but also in what you do outside of the classroom. Can you tell us a bit about what that is? Um, so a VU and Actors is all about creating um, but students creating uh, new um, entrepreneurial action. Um, so I'm part of, within Anactus, I'm part of a group called the Plastic Solution Project. Um, and we're building solutions um, from, by students um, and staff uh, to combat plastic waste. Um, so, so far, um, me and five other students, um, in a couple of years, we've managed to build a, uh, a plastic shredder um, and we use that, we're going to use that then to create plastic products from recycled materials, um, predominantly HDPE. So it's a really exciting project and what's also exciting is that um, the group uh, has made it to the semi-finals in the competition that is run every year. Wow, so, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's, that's sort of my projects that I've worked through. Um, there's so many different projects that uh, students can take up um, being in mechan that are mechanical engineering related. Um, VU Motorsport is one of them. They're great. Um, I wish I had have <laughs> joined them because they do some really good stuff. They do like a lot of um, like hands-on work um, and a lot of designing work that really tones in on your skills with programs like SolidWorks and um, AutoCAD. Um, and they're a really great team and they go to the Grand Prix every year and it sounds like a really, really good opportunity. 
to our new students. So it sounds like some of these projects are pretty time consuming. How do you manage to juggle them with your studies? It's actually, with block mode, it's actually become a lot easier. So I started um, my course in traditional mode. Um, and traditional mode is great, but block mode is even better because uh, we get to finish one subject um, in four weeks. And uh, this means that we have more times off uh, during the transition into subjects. And generally in those blocks, I was able to really get ahead in the hours that I might have missed um, during the time I was doing a subject. So um, yeah, that's how I mainly balance it. Um, yeah, I basically uh, plan out my week. Um, if I've got some extra time here and there, I'll come in for meetings um, with the group um, I'm working with, with Enactus. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great. Rudy, you're a passionate advocate for the block model. Tell us a little bit about how that translates into our engineering courses and how it can set our students up for success. Uh, thank you very much, Emily, for the question. I, I think the biggest thing that stands out from the block model is the student satisfaction um, with that way of delivery. And to offer our students, and I think this is a big um, thing for many people that want to study, is how do you juggle and work family, everything at the same time, plus four subjects or mm. units at the same time. And then often there, there will be four exams of three hours in duration at, in the same week. So having block model is fantastic because within a month you do, for four weeks you do one, one subject or unit and then you finish that unit completely. You can focus 100% on that unit. And within that unit, there, there's not, we don't have exams anymore, but we do have tests. And this, but our exams used to be three hours in duration. But now what we've done is we've broken the exam up into two. So you've got two 90 minute tests throughout the four weeks. So it's a lot more well distributed, the um, assessments. And the most important thing is students are a lot more happy mm. with that learning environment. So that's all that we care about. Yeah, that's certainly what it's all about. Now we're almost at the end of our time together, but we have left some time to work through some questions that have been submitted by prospective students. So Zora, I might address the first one to you. What do the built environment courses qualify me to do in the industry and what career opportunities do they provide? Great question. Right, so our graduates can work for small companies, large companies, private, uh, government, uh, in development, for architects, for big construction companies. So the uh, possibilities are really varied. So starting from, oh, well, they can run their own business. Obviously we do have quite a lot of graduates who are now running their very successful own enterprises. So the opportunities are endless. They are really endless. So from multinational, international companies to the small, like, you know, few people offices, and then again, city councils, uh, various government departments, etc. So mm. anything um, and everything pretty much. <laughs> I imagine those close ties to industry also have really good opportunities for graduates as well. That's right. We are very fortunate that Victoria University has that long track of really strong um, links and ties with industry. So we, our discipline ha has also been able to capitalise on those mm. connections and make a lot of use of those and obviously uh, given the recent uh, uh, standings obviously and high employability of our graduates uh, really speaks to that relationship that we have with industry. Certainly good signs mm. for our students. Mm. Uh, so we have another one here for perhaps to Andrea. Uh, what are the internship opportunities available to our, in, our engineering students? Yeah, no worries. Um, so we have a mentor program um, that is run through uh, the university with City West Border. Um, I was a part of this program um, and really you get, to, you get to work with industry leaders from City West Border and really work on your CV um, and get real experience uh, shadowing um, various engineers. Uh, so uh, in this um, mentoring program, I was also able to uh, visit some of the sites they have in City West Water. So I visited a water treatment facility um, as well as a storage facility and that was really interesting and I got a, whole, a real in-depth tour um, an explanation of how the different um, systems work. So it was really great, yeah. 
Amazing. And I reckon we've got time for one really quick one. Rudy, I can see you hugging that piece of cement and I'm really curious. Can you give us a bit of an insight into what that is and why it's so treasured? <laughs> oh, um, I, I quickly want to add just to Andrea's um, comments about internships. I believe that we've got more internships than students. We've got so we've got such a long-standing, like Professor Vassals was saying, with industry, that um, industry are constantly asking us for interns. So we're almost struggling to keep up with that demand, which is fantastic. Mm. Um, oh, about the concrete. <laughs> 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 uh, well, so um, so students have the opportunity to design a concrete mix that could be used for a high-rise building, a, a bridge, the Westgate Bridge, the foundation of your house. Students actually get to design it and they have the opportunity to mix the concrete and to do a lot of... Um, concrete is just not just two parts cement, one part water. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But students actually in their second year, they design the concrete mix for any application and then they test it to destruction. <laughs> and for some reason, engineers, <laughs> including me, like to destroy things. And um, <laughs> so we put it in a compression testing machine and until it f breaks or explodes. So very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> That's that why is, does it. sound exciting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure anything I built as an engineer would definitely collapse of oh. its own accord, so. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Well, I'd like to thank you so much, Andrea, Rudy and Zora for spending some time with us. We are unfortunately out of time, but hopefully everyone's had their questions answered. For anybody who is after more information on engineering and built environment, make sure you check out those areas on the Open Day website, add them to your block or to your profile to get further information. And we wish you the best of, best of luck with your future studies at Victoria University. Mm -hmm.